My name is Jeff Morgan. I don't know if you remember talking to me about a month or so ago, a month and a half, about Judge Mary Brown. Uh, I don't specifically remember. I'm sorry, but... Well, oh, that, that, that's okay. No, because that, 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 that's the only reason I have your number, because you said, hey, if you want to talk about this. I was, sure. I was in Austin, and you said you were working off-site, but you could come in, and I said that's not necessary, because I think it was in the first two weeks after I filed the complaint against her for violating the election code and raising funds before she was a write-in candidate. But I'm, I'm really, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised in a sense because we have election, you know, we have uh, the pre-election day voting going on right now. And I think that my case is pretty airtight. And I'm just wondering why um, nothing has been done prior to her running. I mean, she's out there telling people things that aren't true regarding what took place from everything that I've heard. Because I've talked with people and they've said she, she committed, you know, that that fraudulent signatures were committed and that's and she's saying oh no no we just didn't have enough and and uh and then she, you know she had a there was an article about her yesterday i believe it was in the dallas morning news because the so you, submit, you submitted it hold on let me ask you a couple of questions sure you, you submitted a, you 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 have filed a complaint is that my understanding yes yes i can give you the number for it no you don't need to do that uh if, if this because you have filed a complaint the appropriate person to talk to would be the enforcement attorney that's assigned to that complaint right so the, the correspondence that you've received uh, should be signed by one of our enforcement attorneys and and that's going to be the most knowledgeable person about the complaint no no I, and I, I understand that because I, I expressed frustration the last time and that and I said you know and I asked if I could speak to somebody else and you called me back the next day is actually what happened there I forget who right. the enforcement attorney was a very pleasant lady um, but and I was telling you hey I understand you have to do what you have to do but two months it just seems like a long time. And I'd like to have, I'd like to be able to talk with her. I don't even remember her name offhand. I'm sorry about that. I just kind of assumed. You should have that correspondence uh, that was sent to you. And, and you know, for what it's worth, like our commission, our, com our, our sworn complaints can only be resolved by a vote of our commissioners. And our commissioners only meet quarterly. So two months, honestly, is not a very long time for the resolution of one of our sworn complaints. Right, but. but it, it, it operates quite a bit like litigation which can take many months, if not over a year. I, I understand that, but then therefore you can have a lady who is cheating the system, violating the election laws of the state of Texas, putting herself out there as this highly ethical judge, even though, and she gets an unfair advantage against her opponents who are following the laws. I mean, that just okay, seems well, to be I'm, wrong. I'm really sorry, I can't do anything to help. No, no, I, I, like I said, people are now calling me about it because Dallas Morning News has picked up the story too. So, I mean, I just, I just want to know what's going on. I just think that, and I understand you, come, you only meet quarterly and everything, but um, it just... Well, there's, it, no, there's no additional information that I am authorized to give you that you have not already been provided. Should I add to the complaint to show that she's even collected more money? You could file a new complaint, but here's the thing. I mean, our sworn complaint proceedings are confidential by law. I, I understand we, that we are told we, we, we are it is it is decided by law what information we can provide the complainants and respondents and what information we can't. Well, you know, so, Mary Brown got to see everything that I submitted. I would just think that I should at least be able to see her reply. I mean, just you know, she I mean, whether 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 that makes sense or not. Is, no, I, I understand. The law, the, the law determines what, what we can share and what we can't. And what, what law is that so that I can seek to get that changed or whatever? It's, it is Chapter 571 of the Government Code. It's okay. It's enabling statute. Okay. No, no, I, and, I, and, I, and I saw some of that stuff, but I just didn't know that there was something that said that you can't share certain information. I mean, you have already sent me, you know, I, I have the, uh, the, the OneNote here, but... All I have in that is the documentation that I've submitted, the five documents that I submitted showing the, uh, the, the, the complaint. And I thought at the very least, I might at least get to see her response or something. But it just, it's, it's a little well, bit just... Not really, right? Because yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not like an adversarial system, right? The, the idea behind the sworn complaint process is somebody notifies us of a potential violation and then we investigate it. Right. It's it's not a it's not an opportunity for a back and forth. It's not no. an adversarial process. It's not like a lawsuit. It's no. not like you get to respond to what the, the the respondent says. I mean, it's you're you're just alerting the law enforcement and, uh, 
uh, agency of a potential violation, and we take it from there. Right. No, no. I mean, it's kind of like a football game that after they re after the game's over, they review the call and they say, hey, the refs made a wrong call. Really, the other team should have won, but it's too late because now the, it's all already in the record books. I mean, I understand that, you know, but I'm just saying I, I just I was a bit disappointed because I was hoping that with the amount of time that I gave that she would at least not be able to continue to lie to the public about it. So. Well, I can't. You can't comment. I know. I'm. Not, I'm not asking you to I comment. I can't comment, and I certainly can't agree necessarily with your conclusion of law. Oh well, I'm just saying. Right now, you know, it's it's the conclusion of law. It's I don't. You know, there is the evidence is there, and then what happens if she gets in when she's she's cheated against her opponents? If an Olympic, so, if you cheat, you get disqualified. Wrong, but she, she's a she's an incumbent, correct? She is an incumbent. So there's a different, so, so it, you know, there, there is a, I will just say in the abstract that there's another law that allows office holders to accept contributions at a different earlier time period than write-in candidates. So, she was a write-in yeah. candidate. She was a, because she did not, she filed fraudulent signatures. So she is, she had she to file. Also, she is also an office holder. Boy, oh boy, that is really pretty messed up. So it still gives her advantage against every other writing candidate. So two writing candidates have follow one set of procedures, and she follows a different set of procedures. Is that what I'm hearing you say? I'm here. What I'm saying is that the same rules and same laws apply to all office holders, and this, and then the, and then there is a, a different law that applies to writing candidates. I don't know. I don't know yeah. anything about this case. No, no, I, I, I understand. Again, I think the, the right person for you to talk to is the enforcement attorney on the case. Right, no, no, and, and, that, and that's what I, I was, I'm waiting to have her call me back, and I forgot her name, but, I, but because I talked with you about a month and a half ago, you called me specifically, so I was, that's why I had your number. I don't have her number, but I had your number. So I thought, I, you know, I'll give you a call because you actually reached out to me about it. Of course. Well, you know, I wanted to make sure that your, uh, you know, I, your questions were answered, and 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 I, I at this point, I, I um, I, I just I, there's no additional information that I can give. No, no, I I, I understand. I, I just have to keep on going back to the to the the fact that our enforcement process is set by law, and it is confidential by law. Yeah. And for me to provide more information, even if it would make sense for me to give it to you, even if I wanted to give it to you. No, I understand would, that. Like I said, it, I, it, I, it would break the law for right. me to do so. Well, and I, and I mentioned to you as well, I also work for the executive branch of the federal government. I understand that you have constraints upon you as a part, as a part of your duties. I was, I, I have talked about this though. Like I said, the Dallas Morning News picked it up. But it's kind of like letting somebody, you know, you're running a 400-meter race, and then the incumbent only has to run 300 meters, and that's considered a fair race, in my opinion. But I understand the law allows the, the incumbent candidate to cheat, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> so anyway, I appreciate talking with you. Absolutely. Great. Take Thank care, you. Sir. Thank you.